This is Tom Bernanke and today I'm talking about spider veins and varicose veins. These are big, thick, dark purple veins on your legs. I'm going to tell you if they're dangerous, what to do about them at home. Are surgeries worth it? And I'm going to give you a couple jokes in between. For example, a woman came into clinic today to see me and she said, are these the biggest spider veins you have ever seen? I said, ma'am, they are not, but they are very coarse. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us. So thank you know, you. because spider veins are varicose veins and they weren't the biggest, but they were very coarse. Okay. My wife didn't like it either. So varicose veins usually happen on your feet, your ankles, the inside of your calf muscles, your knees. These are big, thick purple veins. They're usually dark. They can be black. They could be thick and torturous. It looks almost like a worm underneath your skin. For most people, these are not very dangerous, but they're ugly. People don't like them. They want to know what they can do about them. And the good news is this. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about varicose veins, but there's always the disclaimer. There's always that, you know, one in a thousand chance that it could be something dangerous. And I'm going to go over some of these things and I'm going to really focus on treatments that can be done safely and effectively at home that give you great results. So that's really the key goal of this video. You know, surgery at the same time can be very beneficial, but realistically, if your first goal is to go do surgery, then you probably shouldn't be watching videos like this, you know, go see your doctor and go get surgery done. But I'll talk about the pros and cons of surgery at the same time. And you know what the thing about surgery is, it's really not always the best option. Surgery should be the last option. I'm gonna show you why, because I have so many patients go get the varicose vein surgery done and the results are not what they think. Their leg pain go doesn't go away, their nerve pain doesn't go away, they're itching, they're burning, their swelling in their legs does not go away. The vein, the varicose vein specifically, is a symptom of this much larger problem, which I'll talk about, and it is not the cause. What I like to think about with veins is it's kind of like the bumper on the car where the brakes aren't working. You know, uh, you can keep replacing your bumper frequently, but if you live in New York City and your brakes aren't working, you're probably gonna keep dinging it up and scratching it and getting into accidents. So we're gonna focus on fixing the brakes, which is what I'll emphasize. So for most people, varicose veins are cosmetic problems. These are superficial veins, so specifically, Arteries bring blood from the heart to your tissue, which in this case is your foot, and veins bring blood flow back up to your body. So with varicose veins, this can lead to numbness, burning, itching, unsightly, uh, torturous veins. Um, but can they lead to big problems? Absolutely. They can lead to ulcers. So venous stasis ulcers can be holes on your skin with bleeding. So some of my patients, especially as you start to get obesity, diabetes, uh, lymphedema, swelling, and you know, I'll link to all these videos here for numbness, burning, tingling, swelling, lymphedema, ulcers, but the really big one is a blood clot. So uh, a deep vein thrombosis or a blood clot can develop in your skin. And if you have a hard, red, very painful vein that if you press on is very tight and tender, and it's only on one leg, not the other, go see your podiatrist or your emergency room immediately and get scanned for what's called a venous Doppler. So this venous Doppler will scan your vein and make sure there's not a blood clot because the risk factors with a blood clot is it can shoot up to your lungs and plug your lungs causing something called a pulmonary embolism and this can lead to like a 50% chance of death. So people who are smokers, overweight, have had surgeries, broken bones, there's a high risk of blood clots associated with uh, varicose veins. And this is the real danger of a varicose vein is not only bleeding and ulcers, but a blood clot that can shoot up to your lungs and your heart and cause serious, serious problems. So the causes of varicose veins are you can have valves. So as your blood flows up, the valves open, but as your heart stops beating, the valves close. So your heart goes bum bum, it opens and flows up, but in between it closes so the blood can't flow back. 
But what happens with the vein is, a varicose vein, is it can break and the blood can flow back. So it's kind of moving up, but it's kind of moving back down. Then it just kind of bulges out and swells. So in between heartbeats, the blood kind of recoils a little bit and the valves are supposed to close and not let it back. Once that vein gets broken, it's hard for it to kind of uh, come back. But realistically, the good news is you have thousands and thousands of veins throughout your body, but only a few arteries. So for example, going down the foot and the ankle, there's only a few major arteries. If those get plugged, that's when gangrene happens. But your veins coming up to your heart, some of them can get plugged and break down over time. And it's really not the biggest deal unless there's a blood clot that can shoot up to your heart. That's a different story. But in almost all cases, a vein collapsing in on itself is not a big thing. And eventually, you know, the surgeries, what they do is they get rid of the vein anyway. So it's not the most dangerous at the end of the day. But the main thing is arteries bring blood flow down. So a stronger heart and less body weight bring better flow and not smoking. Whereas veins bring it up, exercising more, not sitting, you know, being younger, being healthier, eating a better vegetable diet, not smoking. Um, doing all these good healthy things are what make your veins work better. So the risk factors are if you're sitting on your butt all day, if you're eating junk food, if you're eating sugar all day, if you have diabetes, if the more weight you put on, it's an exponential amount of work for your heart. So your heart has less force through each individual vein because you have so much more body mass vol volume that your heart has to push. And it gets exponentially harder the more weight you put on for your heart. So obesity is one of the biggest things. But that's great news because losing weight is something most people can do and that means your veins will get better. But don't worry, we're gonna come up with better tips because everybody already knows they have to eat healthier, including me. So the older you get, the harder it is. You know, pregnancy can do it. Uh, I could go over that all day, but realistically, pregnancy should not be permanent, you know. Uh, as your pregnancy goes through, you know, do a lot of the biomechanical things I'll talk about. But the big risk factor is standing or sitting for long periods of time. So sitting for long periods of time can really lead to blood flow problems because the biggest thing that pushes blood flow through your veins besides your heart is your muscles. So with the valves, every time you're, uh, you stand on your leg, the muscles squeeze and they push the blood flow forward and it can't recoil back. So realistically, simply walking will flush all the blood flow out of your legs. So things that help in this regard are compression socks and massage uh, cuffs as well. So when I sit at a computer all day, maybe I don't get up every hour, but I have massage cuffs pushing blood flow up my calf. So if you're getting spider veins and a lot of swelling, uh, compression devices can help push blood flow up. And that's something I recommend to all my friends and people I work with, not just patients. There's different types of compression socks. So there's the knee-high ones that are over the counter. There's knee-high ones prescribed by a podiatrist like myself. So they can be 20 millimeters of mercury, 30 millimeters of mercury, or 40 millimeters of mercury or more. These ones that you buy over the counter are more like 10 millimeters to 15 millimeters of mercury. But what I would recommend is start off with over-the-counter stuff. The doctor stuff is hard to get and it's so tight and so uncomfortable that you can barely move and it might not necessarily be good for you unless your doctor specifically recommended it. So as always, I include some of my favorites, some of the best rated ones, but you don't have to get anything from me. You know, uh, these are not my products by any means. So check out some of these compression socks right here. So you could see down here the different size. They actually do a good job showing you the different colors here. But specifically what you want to look at is they're not that expensive. Like eight pairs for $17. Like, I mean, come on, that's like $2 per pair of socks. So it's like a dollar per sock that you can keep re-wearing. So you can kind of see uh, these are meant to be more athletic. There's some sizing guides. But... These are marketed as nursing socks, but the, what I want you to look at is 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury. This is too low of compression for insurance to cover. Most adults that have swelling problems will not be able to get on the 20 to 30 or 40 millimeter compression socks. These are so tight that nobody wears them. In my experience, everybody tries to buy them, but maybe like 2% of people actually wear them. Get something that's low cost, 
so for like you know a, a dollar per pair here uh, that's lower compression if you find that it's not enough compression for you then get something heavier don't goof around starting with like the 40 millimeter mercury trying to get insurance to cover it because you're going to jump through a lot of hoops you're going to waste a lot of time and it's going to cut into your skin and you're going to hate it if you're like 98 percent of the patients i see start with something low cost and lower compression see how it works see how it fits into your routine and then go up to the higher compression at the same time take a look right here the 20 to 30 millimeter mercury are like 15 dollars. why would you waste time driving to like different uh outlets wasting gas especially the price it is trying to uh, exchange prescriptions from your doctor to the medical supply company to get something like this when it's so cheap online it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me and realistically you should go with the lower compression this for the average person is probably a little bit too high and doesn't provide a ton of benefit it'll cut into your skin and hurt you more than it will benefit you so start with the lower compression rather than the high compression down in the show notes i include my favorites prevention is get healthy eat vegetables don't eat bad foods you know wear good reasonable shoes and i'm going to talk about specifics soon but don't wear things like high heels flats avoid walking barefoot around the house that's a very big one exercising weight loss not smoking can really help out control your salt your diet if you have diabetes if you have congestive heart failure if you have health issues like lymphedema we have a lot of great videos about this but go see your primary care doctor as well as not just your podiatrist and go get these things checked out so for a true diagnosis listen I already mentioned ulcers bleeding and blood clots as a big issue we have a great video about blood clots please watch it if you think you might have one but blood clots are very dangerous so you have to see your podiatrist or your primary care doctor where usually a venous doppler will be performed so with a venous doppler it's essentially a handheld device that presses against your vein so it sees if the blood flow is going up and if the valves are broken down how congested that vein is and realistically decisions can then be made on that so a lot of the times we can make varicose veins and swelling a lot better and what i mean by that is you don't need surgery vast majority of the time nobody needs surgery the vast majority of the time yes are there times people need surgery yes but will this get better without surgery almost 100 of the time never 100 let's say 95 plus percent it will get better by doing the things i talk about but first let's talk about surgery the thing about surgery is there are a few different surgeries so there's radio frequency surgery there's sclerotherapy there's laser treatments that don't actually involve an incision there's going in and basically cauterizing the inside of the veins because hey listen the valves are broken you can basically destroy the vein and get it to collapse in on itself your deeper veins will still control the blood flow so it's not a big deal but this is really what these surgeries do they just make the veins collapse and get plugged and seal up that's really the goal of all these do they work yes they work but they don't get to the root cause of the problem which is realistically why are these veins so engorged you can kill off the veins and get them to shut down but then other ones throughout your life will basically engorge and shut down so the real key is to really get to the root of this so the number one most effective thing that i see is great shoes and great slippers listen they don't have to be ugly shoes some people consider this an ugly but this is called a maximalist shoe basically it's a lot of cushion and a lot of support so what makes a good shoe is a stiff back see how i can't really push it down and it doesn't really bend try that with your shoe at home and see how i can't bend the bottom see how i can't really bend the front this is both cushioned supportive and stiff there are shoes where i can basically grab them and twist them all over the place and they give you no support so an example of this are like ballet shoes flats flip-flop slippers stuff that has no support especially during covid most people walk around barefoot all day and their feet basically flatten out so when i say that is watch what happens to this foot model it just collapses and when it collapses it stretches all the muscles on the inside of your ankle and everything on the outside of your ankle that means your knees buckle in and your feet twist out that happens to everybody so your knees buckle in and your feet buckle out let me give you an example when you walk on the beach it's very soft and cushioned 
but everybody gets tired after half an hour walking on the beach. But now on the other hand, imagine you had a good supportive shoe and you were walking on a gym floor. You could probably walk a lot longer, a lot faster, and a lot more comfortably on the gym floor with good cushioned shoes than you could, for example, jog back and forth on a beach. Because in the beach, your feet buckle out, they sink in the sand, your knee buckles in, you're not supported. So good shoes and good slippers take a lot of stress off your muscles. And as your muscles are not overworked and sore, they don't swell as much. Your skin doesn't stretch as much. Your veins don't stretch as much. Because as your knees collapse and your feet buckle out, that puts more stress on your veins, your tissues. This can lead to swelling, lymphedema. Yes, can things like your heart and high salt cause swelling? Absolutely, you wanna control those too. But what I see is biomechanics are the quickest and the easiest thing to correct this type of swelling. So specifically, start with a good slipper. So take a look at this. I link some slippers in my favorite shoe guide. Check down in the show notes. But simply a slipper with an insole like this. So see, I even put some padding. It's an insole that goes in the slipper. If you're in winter time, you can get a slipper like this. Check this out on the other hand. Flip-flops. So I have flip-flops. These are called the Hoka slides. Look at how thick and cushioned they are. So these can be just as probably more supportive than most people's shoes. So you could even get a flip-flop if you're in a hot area like Florida or a warmer country. And you can wear something like this and get a ton of support. Probably wearing this for a week or two consistently, you know, as you get out of bed and wearing it all day long, your swelling will probably drop like crazy and your veins will start to feel better. Just doing that is very effective. Now the next thing is orthotics. So check what happens to my foot. Shoes can help it from buckling out, but I know this is this seems like it's a model and it's not your real foot, but look at as I push down, see how it's not flattening out? But if I give it a flat ground, see how it flattens out? And just in case you think it's my hand, check this out. Look at how much it's flattening out right there. It's buckling out to the side, whereas check out this orthotic. It's stopping it from buckling out, even though it's a little unstable. So that's how effective orthotics are. So getting a good shoe and a good orthotic, again, I'd link some basic low cost ones. You don't have to go get anything expensive. Start with something low cost and efficient can be extremely helpful. As far as slippers goes, I'm a big fan of Vionic slippers for women. So see, for these types, uh, you have pretty nice built-in arches. They're not really expensive. They're like in the $40, $30 range. But you can see the arch is pretty aggressive in most of these. You can't really go wrong with a brand like Vionic. So Vionic is excellent. Vionic caters more towards ladies, I would say. Even though they do have some shoes, I would recommend uh, don't use them for shoes, but kind of like a house slipper to walk around the house. They are fantastic. There are better shoes you can get though. Uh, for men, I would recommend, for men, I would recommend something like a Spenko. So see, they're just a little bit more earth tones. I kind of have this one up here in the corner that works really well. So these can work really well. See, they make slippers, sandals, um, my wife uses these. She loves the Siesta Slide. Um, so these are really good as well. So Spenco and Vionic are great. Four shoes inside the house. If I had to pick just one, go with the Brooks Ghost that's down in the show notes. So you can see last year's model is a little bit cheaper at about $109. Uh, the new model, the 14, is like $140. These are phenomenal shoes. If you can get an insole, from your podiatrist and over-the-counter insole. And again, down in the show notes are my favorite. Get a good Brooks Ghost. Uh, get the insoles we recommend down in the show notes. It's gonna really make a big difference for you. Massage devices. For when you're sitting on the couch, for when you're sitting at your computer all day, these can really help push the blood flow up and prevent that varicose vein from engorging and swelling. This is a leg compression cuff. So what this does is while you're sitting on the couch, while you're sitting at the computer for one, two, three hours, it will pump the blood through your legs. So simulated walking. Is it as good as walking? It's not. 
And here I'm showing the price. It was cheaper when I bought this. You can see I bought this about a year ago. Um, and what happens is these are phenomenal. I recommend these to people who sit in computer desks all day, people who don't move. There's a reason hospitals force patients to wear these. A patients hate wearing these, but they work because they keep the blood flowing. They're documented in significantly reducing vein problems, blood clots, swelling. So sometimes you can't get up and move, you know, sometimes this is needed. I recommend putting it around your calf muscles. So if you're sitting and you can't get up at least every hour, something like this can be very effective. It feels good. Start on the low setting, but these leg pumps are phenomenal in keeping the blood flowing and simulating walking. Weight loss. Weight loss is huge. So realistically, the more weight you put on, the exponential amount of blood flow your heart has to push. Your heart doesn't really get bigger when you get bigger. So the heart is working even harder. The smaller you are, the less hard your heart has to push blood flow throughout your body. I know that's a simplistic way of looking at it, but that's realistically the truth. At a certain point, people with congestive heart failure, on average, it's more obese people. People with lymphedema, with swelling, it's generally not thinner people unless they had some type of special circumstance like an infection or genetic disease. Avoid salt, eat high fiber. So realistically, this is probably talked about uh, extensively in society, eat your greens, you know, eat a healthy diet. I'm a huge fan of fasting. Listen, I like to enjoy myself on the weekends. I like to go eat the unhealthy food occasionally. You know, I'm, I try to be a very social person and I always made a rule. I'm always gonna eat in social circumstances and I'm not gonna be the person that sits out, but I make up for it by doing fasting. So there's a great doctor, Jason Fong. Uh, he's a nephrologist out of Toronto. I read a book, The Obesity Code and The Ultimate Guide to Fasting. I link them down below. Phenomenal doctor. Fasting was really effective for me. I do it occasionally and it's the only thing that keeps me from ballooning up to a crazy weight. Biomechanics are really important. Tight muscles and tight joints make your feet flatten out and your knees buckle in. This is a big cause of ankle swelling that's correctable by exercise. Look at my left foot compared to my right foot. My left foot can't bend up as much as my right foot. See that? It's about a 10 degree difference and I'll show that in a second. But see now it has to turn out. By not being able to turn up as much and being stiff through my hamstring, through my calf muscle, it creates that difference. That means my leg will swell and get more sore through the muscles as I land on it because that muscle and leg has to work harder. That can explain why one leg's more swollen than the other. So look at this healthy young man right here that's flexible. He's running and his feet are landing straight. They're not buckling out. This is normal running. Whereas a condition called overpronation, look at how much that ankle sags in when this person runs. As people get older and stiffer through their hamstrings, back, and calf muscles, the foot bends out, the muscles have to work harder, and as a result, they swell because the muscles are working harder. So take a look at this older gentleman. He doesn't really have flexible. Uh, flexibility through his feet, ankles, and hamstrings. His muscles have to work significantly harder. This is why older people can sometimes get more swelling and sore muscles. The overworked leg has uneven swelling, and this causes the valves to break down. So you can see on this far right picture here, the valve eventually just takes too much stress from the inappropriate swelling and loading. So on the left is a normal healthy leg where the blood flows. On the right is examples of varicose veins. Too much repeated pressure for years and swelling and overworked, beat up and bruised muscles. This is what I see in the patients, why one leg has varicose veins, but not the other. This is such a common thing. So the reality is you have to get that leg flexible and strong. What I always recommend, just basics, icing and massaging is a great first start. So the bottom of your foot, the back of your ankle, your calf muscle, so ice balls, frozen ice cans, frozen bottles. So I give that a thumbs down because that's better for the muscles, but not on the ground rubber balls with those little soft nubs on them can massage your plantar fascia gradually loosen it up if you're in a lot of pain massage it loosen up those muscles before you stretch them out and work them out i personally like the massage roller stick this works extremely well i do this every morning on my calf muscles my hamstrings so in this example i'm using it on my calf muscles i'm loosening up basically the front of my ankle the back of my ankle 
the bottom of my foot. This makes a big difference. I do my plantar fascia. So then once you're loosened up and I'm talking one to two minutes, what you can do is stretch. So see right here, I'm stretching and I'm using a towel. If, if you can't reach your feet, it's fair to use a towel. And we're talking like one, two minute routine. Identify that tighter leg, stretch your calf muscles, stretch your hamstrings. So that's all I'm doing. If you get a nice routine in the mornings and when you get up, if you're stiff, if you're tight, you have to start somewhere. Just start rotating your ankles, start moving them. These exercises combined with good shoes, good orthotics, good home slippers, and massaging every morning and every evening and doing some light gentle stretching will let you be more mobile. This will let you go on walks. This will let you lose weight. So start doing some of this stuff. It's not just the varicose veins. The varicose veins are a symptom of a much bigger problem, which is your poor flexibility, your poor tissue balance. But with that being said, always get checked out because you could have a clot and you could have a more severe systemic problem. If that helped and you have foot pain, check out this video. This is for you. Please subscribe. Please leave us a comment. It makes a big difference and let us know if we suck or if we need to improve.